Hello you beautiful bugger you and welcome to another knee slapping episode of Textbook Weekly. And this week's episode is brought to you by a hideous f***ing migraine which is exactly what I've had these last couple of days because we're literally having our old bathroom ripped out piece by piece and replaced with something that doesn't look like an old person died in it. Unfortunately that does also mean I've had to put up with non-stop pounding for most of the week so now I know how your mum feels. So anyway if my usual calm and thoughtful approach to this week's tech shenanigans seems a little bit more distracted or slapdash than usual or we're suddenly interrupted by a frantic bout of hammering or drilling uh, that's the reason I can only apologise and say that hopefully next week's episode will be slightly less amateurish but I think we all know that that would just be a lie. Techspert Weekly. So tech news, eh? And uh, this week, the Honor 50 phone finally launched here in Blighty after hitting the Asian markets like four friggin' months ago. And this 6.57 inch spunky slab sports a 120 hertz screen that curves right around those edges. And it's powered by a Snapdragon 778G chipset with a 5G modem built in. The 4,300 milliamp battery supports 66 watt fast charge shenanigans, while the 108 megapixel primary camera can smash out a Kraken 4 2 or 2 when needed. Wait for that to finish. Of course, the best news is that Google services are A or K here on the Honor 50 phones because of Honor's split with Huawei, so you've got all the usual Google apps and full Play Store access. Hip hip hazar. And I've only gone and done you a full unboxing and hands on with that Honor 50, so go check that out right now for all you need to know. And also this week, although the launch hasn't actually happened at the very time that I'm seeing this stuff at the camera, by the time this video goes live and you're actually watching me say this stuff, hopefully Xiaomi will have officially launched the fresh new Redmi Note 11 series. This includes three phones, the standard Redmi Note 11, as well as the Note 11 Pro and the Note 11 Pro Plus, for those who've got a bit more cash stuffed down the back of the mattress. Now, apparently the standard and Pro models of the Redmi Note 11 should be powered by MediaTek's fresh Dimensity 920 chipset, sort of aligning itself roughly with the Snapdragon 778G, so hopefully a good bit of grunt. Uh, meanwhile, the Pro Plus will indulge in a bit of cock swinging with a upgraded Dimensity 1200 SoC. And you can also expect some hot 108 megapixel camera action, as well as some super a nippy 120 watt battery charging support as well just like on the recent Xiaomi 11T Pro. Go check out my unboxing of that bad boy if you haven't already, it was uh, rather marvellous. But it's really annoying, I mean frankly all of this is just pissing in the winds, they might have just been pretending to launch the fresh new Redmi Note 11 phones and then actually just stood around on stage for an hour whistling show tunes for all I know, you'll know more than I do just by googling it. I mean, maybe they just revealed a whole bunch more robot death dogs instead who promptly turned on their masters and the audiences as well in scenes of shocking carnage. And now we're already heard in the last of the human survivors underground in a desperate attempt to save the remains of this species. And as this video ticks live on the YouTube servers, there's no bugger around to actually watch it because the signal in a concrete bunker 50 feet underground is probably rather crap. Which is a real shame, of course, because this is an absolute cracker of an episode. And to be honest, that's pretty much all of the more interesting tech news this week. There were very few launches and stuff, basically everything was crammed into the past couple of weeks instead, so it's been reasonably quiet on that front, which means unfortunately it is time for the part of the show that's about as healthy as snorting a deep-fried block of lard. It's for your comments! And it's the only time in my life I've actually prayed for a brand new bathtub to come crashing through the ceiling and crush me right on camera. Viewer comments. Uh, so first up, following the slightly unfortunate discussion on Westlife last week, uh, James very kindly sent in the following. This is some kind of bizarre alternative reality where I actually became a pop idol, but not really sure I'd fit in with the rest of the Westlife chaps, to be honest. I kind of look more like Pat Sharp with a... 10 times a day crack pipe habit. But cheers for that anyway, James. Certainly gave me a giggle. Uh, there were quite a few people asking where did the Pixel unboxings go? So I did a Pixel 6 and a Pixel 6 Pro unboxing last week. Uh, they were up for a few days, uh, but then uh, quite a lot of people were saying, oh, you broke embargo, you broke embargo. The embargo was incredibly uh, complicated, unnecessarily so, to be honest. Uh, so Google said, you're not allowed to demonstrate any of the new features. I made sure I didn't demonstrate any new features, but I did show off a bit of the camera UI and stuff, and I thought, best just to sort of take them down until the full embargo lift uh, this week, which has gone live. So Pixel 6 review is live, Pixel 6 
camera review is live, all the unboxings, some comparisons on their way as well. But yeah, I hate these double embargoes. It's, it gets very confusing. Very few manufacturers actually use them, thankfully. I mean, Google and Samsung are two of the only that still do. And poor old Uncle Spurt, you know, he gets confused at the best of times these days, unless he's had a pint of vodka and then suddenly gains crystal clear clarity on everything. Uh, keeping on the subject of the pixels, Millwall Fan TV says, you pimped that Pixel 6 review so much, you're basically Snoop Dogg now. And I totally did want to be Snoop Dogg when I was like 14, 15, you know, that Doggy Star was an absolutely fantastic bloody album. Um, gotta admit, a little bit of my soul does kind of wither away every time I see those Just Eat ads. But you know, I'm not going to judge, he might have smoked his way through most of his savings and even a pimp has to think about, you know, pension plans and retirement and such forth. Oh good, they appear to have set off some sort of alarm I didn't even know we had now. Brilliant. Uh, next up, uh, Latrell 1973 says, is the pixel made by what was left of HTC after Google bought up some of the company? Uh, yeah, um, certainly the old HTC gang was involved with some of the previous Pixel flagship smartphones and everything, so I'd be very surprised if at least some of them didn't work on uh, this new one. But yeah, really surprised actually by uh, just how much that design and pretty much everything else involved with the Pixel smartphone changed up for this generation. Quite a breath of fresh air over the usual, you know, minor little refinements. Uh, completely breaking uh, free of the whole tech shackles now. Uh, Dean says, just last night I had a giant Yorkshire pudding wrap filled with chips and sausage. I think I may have just came a little. The next up, Doug says, currently at 666,000 subscribers, should we all be concerned or just go back to the pub? Rock on, brother. Yeah, I definitely uh, did notice when it ticked over onto that 666 mark, I might have blasted a bit of classic Maiden that day just to uh, celebrate. Uh, David also notes as well, as you have 666,000 subscribers, can you tell us a spooky ghost story next week? And I guess that would be pretty apt with it being Halloween this week and everything as well. But frankly, who needs a ghost story when real life is this f***ing terrifying? And next up, Nafi says, uh, Chainsaw Man manga was so good. Can't wait for the anime and also part two of the manga. Yeah, definitely hype through the ceiling on that one, mate. Yeah, really uh, enjoyed the bit of the manga that I've read so far. I've still got a lot to catch up on there. Uh, but yeah, the anime looks friggin' fantastic. So definitely be getting my uh, peepers on that one. Uh, next up, uh, Flashheart. Is that a black eye? reference and if so I approve heartily uh, says you are to tech reviewers what father Jack Hackett is to priests and yeah that's uh, that's pretty apt actually I, I do feel kind of out of place at quite a lot of these press events these days all these fresh-faced young bucks sipping their kill smoothies and there's me slumped in a darkened corner of the bar, double fist and some whiskey. Um, Mickle Jew, sorry if I'm all the pronunciation of that, says, What camera are you using for this video? The footage looks great. Uh, it's the Sony Alpha A7S III, and I'm using the Sigma 24-70mm lens on it as well, which does seem like slight overkill, considering all it's got to record is my baldy bonts and the occasional phone. Like when I first started this channel as well, I was literally just recording uh, using, I can't even remember, I think it was like an old iPhone that I had lying around or something like that uh, with just a little lav mic uh, stuck in it. So yeah, it feels like a, a bit of a, an evolution it's in terms of the production values, not in the actual quality of the content, unfortunately. And next up, we've got BillyBean89. Uh, not just one, but two tech-related questions here, really making me uh, work this week. Uh, what would you go for between the OnePlus 9 and the Google Pixel 6? Um, I mean, I really like the OnePlus 9, but personally, it would have to be the Pixel 6 for me. Uh, the performance isn't quite as strong, but the battery life's fantastic. Camera's nice and dependable. I really like some of the new privacy and security features and everything that you get chucked in there. Uh, next part of the question. Also, do you think that there's another phone that offers the same as these two phones, but not that price? So I guess you're after something that's a little bit cheaper. Uh, than them too. Uh, the one that springs to mind instantly is the Poco F3, which has fantastic performance, uh, solid all-rounder for around the sort of 350 to 400 pound mark. But I have done a separate video rounding up the best mid-range smartphones in 2021. So definitely go check that out for some alternative suggestions. It's basically the lazy approach and also means I get extra traffic. Hooray. Uh, next up, Stephen says, I can't afford the new Pixels or the new MacBook, but lordy lordy, the Motorola Moto E20 or that MacWipe is right in my wheelhouse. Yeah, almost 20 quid 
for a bit of cloth. Uh, I mean, geez, if I ever get around to doing a video roundup of the tech world's biggest piss ticks, that would be pretty high up the list. In fact, most of the list would just be sodden apple. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, back in my Rokombu days, I did an article on the world's most expensive iPhones. You can literally uh, spend millions of pounds on some that are made of solid gold and encrusted with diamonds and bits of dinosaur bone. I shit you not. And uh, yeah, I think they were like five, six million a pop. And yet still a bit crap. And next up, Stuart says, why is the fictional town of Erinsborough from Neighbours called Erinsborough? Uh, I honestly could not tell you. I've never seen an episode of Neighbours in my life. I sort of I've absorbed some bits of the Neighbours culture from the friends who used to watch it back in the day. Uh, but yeah, I've got no idea. Is one of the writers called Erin by any chance? Still on the subject of telly, uh, Barnaby says, I don't think Evil Kit turned into a beetle. In a later episode, some people found him buried on the beach beneath where he'd gone off the cliff. I mean, that is that is classic screenwriting right there. You run out of ideas for new stories to so just bring back a bunny from the past that everyone thought was long since expired. It's like in uh, Child's Play 2, the classic example. It makes absolutely no sense. Why would uh, the good guys doll corporation want to fix up a murderous psychopathic doll that literally killed a whole bunch of people. You know, actually no benefit to anyone. I guess someone on the board must have been smoking a whole load of crack that day. And still on the subject of classic telly, Mr. Peanut Butter says, Do you remember Manimal? That show freaked me out as a kid. Um, the name kind of rings a bell, but I never actually watched it. So I am going to Google it. Okay, this is a bit more outlandish than I, than I was expecting. A man who can change himself into any animal helps police solve crimes. What was I just saying about smoking a whole lot of crack? Now are we actually talking like any animal throughout the whole of uh, history here, you know, so even extinct stuff, because then basically why wouldn't you just transform yourself into a T-Rex and then eat the living shit out of anyone who was bothering you? But I'm guessing due to budgetary constraints, he mostly just transformed himself into a cat or a dog. And then we really better make this the last one because I've been banging on for far too long. Apologies, everyone. Um, and Nigel says, will there be Spurton Army merch, branded beer cans, cider balls, etc.? Yeah, I've always said from the very beginning, if I ever start spaffing out Texpert mugs or hats or anything like that, you've all got my express permission to punch me right in the cock. However, if there are any uh, brewers out there who wanted to do, you know, a special edition Texpert Spurton Army Bitter or something like that, then I'd be all over that like Jimmy Carr on a Cayman Islands tax dodge. And it looks like the uh, cat has decided to join me in here, get uh, get away from all the, the banging <laughs> outside. But yeah, Spurton Army Brew, something like that Iron Maiden Trooper Ale, uh, you know, I'm picturing myself in like a Viking helmet, uh, maybe passed out face first in a sort of a orangey yellow puddle, might be the beer might be human waste. Works on so many levels. Anyway, uh, that's all we've got time for, unfortunately, this week. Big, big thanks to everyone who commented last week. Uh, you know, great fun, as always, reading through those. And uh, please do smash your comments down below. We'll get through as many of those as possible next week. And of course, as always, speaking of next week, next week, next week, what the f is next week? A very little, once again, on launch front uh, by the Lux of it. Let me just check the embargo list, see if anything is happening there. Yeah, nothing particularly exciting there. Uh, but certainly next week, I will be bringing you some hot content all the same including finally my iphone 13 pro max review see what i think of that absolute house brick of a smartphone i'm also planning on finally reviewing the nintendo switch oled as well after a month of playing with that bad boy spoiler alert it's pretty freaking good and there is an asus rog phone embargo lifted on the thursday so uh stay tuned for some unboxing action there and of course this time next week a bit of the textbook weekly is hopefully with less banging uh, should I wait for it to end? No, I'll just kill this video dead now. Just put it out of its misery and all of you guys as well. So thank you very much again. Join me next week. Now the cat's getting into sh Oh, God damn it. Just, just end it now. Love you.